Murray was born four months early. It was the beginning of a long journey. From the day he arrived, he's fought to survive and make sense of his world. Murray was a thriving, happy baby, right up until he was about 18 months old. Then overnight, he changed. He couldn't say mum, dad, or baba. I saw him one day, playing with some fluff on the carpet. He was so engrossed in that fluff. I called him, tried to get his attention, but he didn't respond. I knew something was wrong. I got his hearing tested. The doctor said he had selective deafness. <laughs> the reality was so much bigger. In the end, I took Murray to a brain specialist in Newcastle. He tried to engage Murray in activities, but he was more interested in pulling on the stethoscope and turning on the taps at that wash basin. Within 10 minutes, the neurologist diagnosed Murray with autism. I asked what could be done to fix it. I wasn't prepared for the words, lifelong disability. I almost passed out. I didn't ring my family or my partner. I didn't know what autism was. I couldn't digest it. I was so confused and very alone. What is autism? What treatments are available? What kind of life is my son going to have? I need to find other Aboriginal mothers of kids with autism. I need to learn about my boy. Every word was a physical blow to my heart. I grieved for my lost boy. My first information workshop felt more like a funeral for all my hopes and dreams. I cried the whole time. The following years were extremely difficult. I wasn't coping well and I felt totally abandoned by friends and some family members. But my mother and father would always remind me that my ancestors sent Murray to me. They chose me because I was strong enough to bear such a heavy load. That belief gave me strength. None of us really understood what autism was, so not only did I have to educate myself, but I had to ensure that all our family and the community knew why Murray was different. Between the age of three and five was the hardest. In terms of establishing some sort of routine and trying to work out what sets him off. Psychologically, I was ready to crash. It was all just too much. There were times when Murray didn't sleep for up to 48 hours. I was exhausted. When Murray started preschool, he would come home really stressed. I watched him in class one day and noticed that he couldn't cope with the pitch of the teacher's aide's voice. I had to pull him out. I couldn't handle watching my boy have a meltdown. As Murray grew, so did his behaviours. He started school in a high-needs special education class. The teachers couldn't manage him and I'd always be getting calls. It got to the point where I'd just refuse to pick him up. I'd tell him to learn to cope with him or get another job. I was constantly searching for better treatments for him. As an Aboriginal mother of a child with autism, I experienced countless barriers. 
Sometimes non-Aboriginal people didn't understand where I was coming from. They didn't understand how culturally important it is for Aboriginal people to show respect by attending funerals. It was during these times that we needed respite. My partner and I missed many funerals. We needed extra help and my passionate calls for help were misinterpreted as aggressive. But I was learning. I learned that if I don't speak up for my boy, nobody will. Like many other parents, I was simply fed up. I was tired of attending reviews, going through the same motions, the usual round of repetitive questions. Many people in my community speculated that 20 to 30 years ago, certain people showed signs of autism. Nobody knew what it was, and so nobody spoke of it. They had their own special place within the community and were loved and accepted, just like Murray is. My immediate family was my main support. My neighbours and the Aboriginal community became aware of his disability and would look out for him. They'd pull people up for not handling him properly. Gradually, family and friends began to understand that I couldn't have big mobs of people walking in and out of the house. We couldn't have too many sounds at once. He'd get confused. This would cause a meltdown, which would take hours to bring him out of. At bedtime, the house had to be completely dark and silent. Murray's bedroom was far from the bathroom, but if a tap was dripping, There are so many layers to autism. It can be overwhelming and depressing. Many times I could have walked out that door and kept going. For a long time I went through the feelings of, why me? Why my boy? And occasionally I still do. What helps me is knowing that I was chosen by my ancestors to be Murray's mother. Every day is hard, but every day I feel blessed. He's lovable and affectionate. He likes to be cuddled and squeezed. He gives me kisses and holds my hand. He's strong and <laughs> remarkably good looking. I get so many compliments for his looks. Like every child, Murray likes to make his mum happy and he tries hard to understand us. Murray has his own very special place within both sides of his family, and he's fortunate to have many positive male influences in his life. Him and his dad have this unbreakable bond. My father grieved for the man that Murray should have been, and the life he should have had. For a long time, I grieved too. I dwelled on the things he couldn't do. Now, I focus on what he can. Murray is 17 years old, non-verbal and nappy dependent. I worry about my boy's future because 
I wonder who will take care of him when I'm gone. I try not to think about it too much. I can't be down in the dumps all the time. Murray picks up on my feelings and he doesn't understand different feelings. So when I'm all right and coping well, there's a much better vibe in the house. The best thing I ever did for myself was making the decision to go back to school. It's empowered me and my boy feels that strength. Murray drives me to be the best person I can be. He's the drive behind my relentless search for better treatments. Before my grandmother passed over to the dream time, she could see that something was wrong. She told me that God dealt me a dodgy hand, but if I play my cards right, I can still win the game. For me, winning the game means never giving up. And I'll never give up on my boy.